six weeks pregnant and so I have gotten my hospital bag ready so I thought I would go ahead and show you what is in there well it's almost completely packed I'm still waiting on one more um, box to come in from Amazon with some things which I'll tell you but for the most part all my bags are packed and we are ready to go um, but before I show you me and baby girl's hospital bag, I thought I would show you what I've packed for my older two. So, um, we're not completely sure how this is going to go down. It really just depends on what time of the day I go into labor and all that kind of good stuff. But, but from the boys, um, with Ian, I went into labor, um, around 10 PM at night and I had him the next morning around, almost 11 a.m. It was like 10 something. And then I was discharged the very next day. And we didn't have to worry about, you know, who's going to watch a kid because it was our first kid. And then with Henry, our second, um, my mom was there. She flew into Japan. So um, I went into labor with Henry around midnight. And then I had him later that day at around like nine something in the morning and uh, but my mom was home with my older son so again I didn't really have to figure anything out but this time due to COVID um, my mom is unable to fly here because Japan is not allowing any um, tourists in so my mom was not able to fly out because that was the plan is that she was gonna fly out to watch the boys for us at our house while we went to go have baby girl. But now we don't have that. So we have asked some friends to be on call. I have three separate friends, um, three different families who have all said that they would basically be on call on standby to come watch the boys whenever I go into labor. Now, um, if she follows like her brothers, I will go into labor late at night, at which point I would call one of the friends to come over and they would just come here to my house and sit with my kids, you know, and so that's that. Um, but all three of my friends have kids of their own, so they do eventually need to go home. Um, they all have little kids like I do. So um, I, and I don't know how long we would be at the hospital. I usually, I give birth one day, I'm discharged the very next day. Um, and because we have little kids, uh, normally Neil stays with me at the hospital until I'm discharged. But because Henry is so little, he is three, we just think um, it would just be better this time if Neil stayed with me at the hospital until little miss is born. And then, um, you know, spend some time with her, skin to skin, snuggles, all that kind of stuff. And then go ahead and just go pick up the boys and be home with them until I'm discharged and then come back and pick me up. So that's our plan this time. Um, have to relieve the other families because all one friend has three little kids and then both of the other two have two little kids. And so just adding two more onto that, it, you know, I just, plus I just think our kids would be comfortable at home with dad, um, more than at somebody else's house. So, um, yeah. That's the plan is that Neil is going to be with me until she's born and then maybe for a few hours afterwards and then he's going to go home. But on the off chance that I go into labor during the day and my kids need to go to the person's house and stay the night there, I have packed them some bags. So one thing I have packed them is this, which is a blow up mattress. I'm pretty sure all my friends have a blow up mattress, but I, I don't want to assume things. So I have a queen size mattress. A pump is in here as well as a sheet set so that they have a bed, um, at whoever's house that they are at, as well as a sleeping bag, which they can open up all the way to use as a nice warm blanket with the bed set. And then of course, um, pillow for each of them. So basically I have just packed an entire bed for both of them. Um, they can both sleep together on a queen because they're both tiny. Um, and then here is their overnight bag. So in their overnight bag, I have packed a sippy cup for Henry. I think all of them, because they have little kids already still have sippy cups, but you know, anyways, this one's got his name on it and on the off chance that their kids don't use sippy cups anymore 
um, Henry definitely does. And if they give him a regular cup, he's going to spill it, make a mess in their house. So I just wanted to pack a sippy cup for him to use. And then in here, I have a brand new toothbrush for each of them and a toothpaste as well as a comb. So that's what's in there. The comb is mostly so that uh, in case Ian has to go to school. All of my three friends have kids that go to the same school as Ian. So if for some reason, you know, it's night, but then they have him overnight and then the next day is a school day, um, he's got school clothes, he has his backpack, and he can get ready for school. And they can drop him off with their kids. Um, in here, in the big part, I have a brand new pack of wipes because Henry is not potty trained yet. He's potty training, but we are not there yet. So he's got 10 pull-ups, which he will not need this many, but I just packed a ton anyways. Um, because like I said, I'm usually discharged the very next day after I have a baby. So there's no way they're going to need this many, but better have too many than not enough. So uh, wipes and pull-ups. And then for Henry, we've got a set of chamois again, in case I go into labor during the day and then he's actually at their house at nighttime. Um, we've got a sweater and then Henry's clothes we have. So for Henry, I packed two outfits just because he is not potty trained yet. And if for some reason, you know, we had accidents, it is what it is. So he has two bottoms and two tops. Ian, I only packed uh, one outfit because he's not going to have accidents. <laughs> um, so he has a bottom and a top as well as undies and he's got jammies and he also has a sweater. So that's everything that I've packed for the boys. Um, depend so it, it just covers whatever time i have to go into labor and if he's at if they're at somebody's house they have everything they need to stay the night each of my boys has a special stuffed animal that they sleep with every night and so that would be the only thing that i have to throw into their bag their overnight bag um if that is something that they end up needing to do so um i decided this time that i'm going to bring a small uh carry-on sized suitcase um i had a like overnight like weekender bag but it just it wouldn't close and i still had a few more things i need to throw in there and then plus the hospital always gives you a ton of stuff to take home so i figured i have tons of space left over in here and it just made more sense this year or this time this year sorry mommy brain so um it looks so big when i show it on camera but it's actually not very big but it looks huge this looks like a huge suitcase but it's actually really small um but anyways and it's it's half empty just because i'm anticipating um like i said the other stuff i still need to pack plus all of the things that the hospital gives you so here is what i have packed so far so um i have one bag for me my clothes so in this bag we have some pajamas. Um, I plan to do all of the labor and delivery in the hospital gown that they give you and get that one all yuck. But then once I'm cleaned up and in my recovery room, I want to change into something more comfy and less exposing. <laughs> so um, I have a pair of really soft pajama pants and a nursing tank top as well as a robe. And then if for any reason, you know, this gets whatever, I also have a backup uh, nursing bra to wear with that. And then, um, oh, and I also packed a pair of socks. And then to go home in, I have a like soft jersey knit dress and a pair of undies. So that is everything that is in this bag. And then I have one bag for baby. So um, in her bag, this is what it looks like inside. I have 10 diapers, which I 
I'm sure I don't have to pack these because our hospital provides everything that you need while you're there, which they provide um, diapers and wipes. So I don't, sorry, I'm gonna move that just a little. Um, so I know I don't need to pack these, but just in case, I'm packing them anyways. And then of course, a pack of wipes. And then I have a nursing cover, although we are not permitted. They just changed the rule to now you can have two guests, but um, really it'll just be Neil. And so I probably won't use this, but I'm bringing it anyways. I have a pair of socks and a pair of baby mittens for her. I also have a Velcro swaddle. And then for pictures, like her announcement pictures, I have this pretty swaddle with this baby bow. And then for coming home outfit, I have two different sizes. Um, just because they keep saying that she's measuring big, my babies have always been small. Ian and Henry both came out six pounds, some odd ounces. Um, and so they're just little teeny tiny peanuts. And so I kind of just assumed she would also be a little teeny tiny peanut, but they keep telling me she's a big girl. So I did pack her a newborn outfit to come home in, and I'm hoping that she fits in this. Um, my sweet friend Pam here on YouTube, she has an Etsy shop um, called Tool Time. I will put a link below to both her channel and to her Etsy shop. She made Henry's going away outfit to match my oldest son Ian's going away outfit and she made this one for this baby girl. Her name is right here on the, that's why I have it bent. Um, but she also made this one which coordinates with my boys. And then obviously I have a little bow hat. So I'm hoping this is what she gets to wear home from the hospital. It's size newborn, but if she is as big as the doctors keep saying she's going to be, I also have a bigger outfit, which is zero to three. And it says little sister and it has a matching hair bow. So that is everything I have in her little bag. Okay. And then for snacks, just because I don't know what time I'm going to go into labor and if the cafeteria is going to be open or closed. And so just in case I get hungry, I have a bag of trail mix and I also have a bag of beef jerky. Um, and then I have my camera. So we take those first pictures of her. I have four batteries an SD card, which is already in the camera, and then chargers for the camera. Okay, so that's everything that's in the main suitcase part. So that took up half the suitcase. Um, the other part of the suitcase, which I'm leaving empty, like I said, is for all of the things that the hospital sends you home with, which is any pack of diapers that you already opened, they have to throw them away. You don't take them. So diapers, same for wipes, um, and then all the like, postpartum care stuff. So the dermaplast, the witch hazel pads, the big huge pads, the mesh underwear, all that kind of stuff that the hospital gives me will go in that bottom part of my suitcase. And then I have a one box I'm waiting on from Amazon, which should be here in just a few days. And in there I have a bunch of nipple care stuff. So like Lancino nipple cream and nipple shields, as well as a postpartum I don't know what else to call them except depends, but like adult diapers. They're adult diapers, but it's for postpartum. Um, so I thought I'd give those a go this time just because the mesh undies and the pad situation is very uncomfortable. And I've heard that the um, postpartum briefs are way more comfortable. So I bought a pack of those to try. Um, and then, so in the last bit of my suitcase, I have a toiletries bag. And this little zipper here, all I have is a pen just to fill out stuff, I don't know. Um, but then in the main part here, I have some breast pads, a shower cap, I have a loofah and body wash, I have some toothpaste as well as toothbrush, deodorant, a hairbrush as well as a scrunchie and some regular just hair ties and some hand sanitizer and a um, lip balm. So that's everything that's in there for toiletries. And then I have a pair of flip flops to use as shower shoes. I have a pack of disposable face masks 
and one of these thingies that keeps it like off your face a little bit so you can breathe easier. Um, at my hospital, the birthing mother does not have to wear a mask unless like if you're just in labor, you have to only wear a mask when nurses and stuff come in to check you. But once you're actively pushing, you can take your mask off because as soon as you get admitted, they give you a COVID test. Um, so if you test positive, you still have to wear a mask. If you don't test positive, then you only have to wear a mask if they're in your room and you're just laboring. But once you start actively pushing, you can take your mask off. Um, so anyways, I just have a pack of those. And then I have two rolls of Ritz crackers because they always give you like pain meds right after you deliver. And I can't take pills with water or anything like that. I have to take pills with crackers. They don't always provide those. So I brought my own crackers to take pain meds. And then in this little thing, I just have a pacifier and a pacifier clip for little miss. And then let's see, in this little baggie, I have uh, earbuds, a uh, charger, and a little power pack. And then the very last thing I have in here is a coin purse with yen. I will also be bringing my cell phone, which I'm recording on right now, as, and as well as like my regular wallet with my ID and stuff like that. And then in that one, I have regular USD, uh, but because I live in Japan, um, I also have to carry yen, which is Japanese money, uh, because yeah, <laughs> we're in Japan and I, I can't remember if the vending machines at this hospital take USD or yen. So I'm bringing both, um, for that, but yeah, that is, oh, one more thing. Um, so because I live in Okinawa, Japan, uh, we have typhoon season and we actually just entered typhoon season yesterday. So, um, after a certain point in your pregnancy, if, uh, I am very bad at this. I know there's like T core, T core is like, um, how close the storm is to where you are. So they have like T core one, T core two, T core, like emergency, T core caution, T core recovery. Anyways, if, uh, typhoon is eminent then and then you're at some t core level which i can't remember right now because pregnancy brain um all pregnant ladies over a certain point and i have surpassed that point have to go to the hospital and you just have to sit there um and they tell you to bring a pillow and blanket and snacks and things because you basically have to just wait out the storm at the hospital because after a certain t core level um, you're not supposed to be driving outside. You're supposed to like shelter in your house. And so if you were to go into labor, it would be kind of dangerous for you to drive to the hospital as well as it'd be dangerous for them to send an ambulance. So once it gets to a certain T core level, and if you're over a certain point in your pregnancy, you have to just go to the hospital and just sit there and ride out the storm. So I also have, so I also have my pillow here just in case we are in a uh, storm watch or t -core, typhoon, whatever. And I also have a blanket. And then I will also bring um, some PB&J sandwiches because I'm pretty sure they don't feed you either while you're waiting out the storm. Um, so yeah, I have, some, I have another bag with typhoon prep stuff to take to the hospital if that were to happen. But if there is no typhoon and I just happen to go into labor, then I will just only be bringing um, my pillow and not all the other typhoon stuff that they say that I need. But anyways, that is everything that I'm taking to the hospital this time. If there's anything that you think I've missed, please let me know. And yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.